I think I, I think maybe we're we're allowed to begin. What do you think? I think we're alone now, as as the as the great pop hit declared. But more more alone now than ever before, perhaps. <laughs> So how are you doing? Because I, I I hear it's your son's birthday today. It is. My son is nine years old. Um, he he's uh, he's one of three sons, and uh, that particular smallest son is nine years old. Well, and uh, he sort, sort yeah sort of takes me to um, a kind of uh, it, it encapsulates our time in Ipswich in Suffolk actually it's a bit longer than we've been here longer than nine years but it kind of it's the entirety of his life has been in in Ipswich. That sounds brilliant that sounds brilliant so is his middle name Suffolk or? Something? Oh you've, you've landed <laughs> you've landed on a it's... big one there his middle name is Elvis. Oh that's fantastic I didn't know that whose decision was that? <laughs> we 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 both loved Elvis. We thought that's cool. Elvis is is, and we were kind of going with that for a while, and then we completely lost our um our courage as we approached the um you know where you go and declare the name of your child, and uh, yeah. that the the person there, the registrar office, persuaded us to leave it as a middle name and then we can decide to drop it out altogether within a year but we didn't do that so he is um arthur elvis back at that's fantastic it feels it feels as if we should go through all of your children's names now but i don't think <laughs> i don't think that's what uh, people have kind of tuned in for so um no that's great i mean um, I've always th found it remarkable that, that that you, not just you, like this could sound like an insult now, have three children. But I mean, someone who works in theatre, who has worked in theatre, running their own company for nigh on twenty years, has a has a full family life as well. I I find that remarkable, um, and I also find other things remarkable. Um, to kind of to kind of kick this conversation off. Um, yeah, I guess I guess just to make it clear, like what's happening in Gecko at the moment is extraordinary and incredibly positive, right? Do you want to just kind of let us know uh, what's going on? Um, I guess the headlines, in a way, with Gecko are that we've made a lot of progress with our creation home, which is going to you know, really um, positive, groundbreaking work in the literal sense, as, as well as the poetic sense, is going to happen within the within the next few months. And yeah, that that creation home is is all systems go. And you know, we've been dreaming about it and talking about it. I mean, in that particular spot on the waterfront in Ipswich for um, probably a year or probably more, but it's really all um, come to fruition in in the last sort of, I guess, four or five months. It's really come to fruition, and yeah, it will be it will be opening, I guess, at some point at the, the, around the beginning of twenty two. So yeah, it's really that's really happening. Um, we started working on a new show, and uh, that's been a really beautiful process. Actually, it's been one of my favourite creative processes ever that I can remember we've been we that would that yeah that sort of happened September October November and December in those months that creation process so that's the first R&D of the new show um, and we've continued to reflect on our journey in terms of filmmaking um, since uh, Institute aired and was broadcast on the BBC in August so that's a continuing conversation. There seems to be a lot going on. So those are, those are yeah. some headlines. Yeah, I mean, it's outstanding, astounding and outstanding. I mean, you know, while the world's been in all this turmoil, it, it sounds as if you've been blossoming and, and you know, and, and moving forward, which is, which is fantastic. I mean, how, how do you think you pulled that off? While the rest of us are lying, scratching our heads, thinking, oh, what are we going to do? You've been doing stuff. 
Well, I mean, thank you for that, Sean. That's very, that's very lovely of you. Um, I don't think it's entirely true. I think that, I think that it's been obviously a very complex time, a very profound time in lots of um, complex ways, more of which we will grow to understand as time passes. But, um, and I think, and I've spoken to plenty of artists who have who have gone through a period of reflection, um, kind of using this time in 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 a reflective way. I think I, for me and for Gecko, I think it struck me quite quickly that um, the things that we are ostensibly known for in terms of international touring and and uh, reaching a very broad and eclectic audience across the world was not going to be the thing that we were going to be doing. And I think I, I quite quickly started to um, feel a sense of relief about that in that I think over the years I've become, and I'm sure this is the case for lots of artists, attuned to the, enjoy, the enjoyment of, of problems that arise in that one senses that there are potentials and doors and uh, that will open up, that there'll be that, that the tear in in um, that's created in in what's the norm um, provides for some growth, provides for some development, and I guess I'm always on the lookout for that. I'm always I'm always aware that there's an opportunity within that, and I think after the after initially, I guess battening down the hatches and kind of making sure the company wasn't going to um, completely collapse, um, it, it, I immediately felt this is exciting to me. There's something about this that um, uh, provides huge opportunity. And it's, I've, I've loved that aspect of it. I've really loved it. I don't think I would have gifted myself the type of year that we've had. Um, such is the pace of running an arts organization in in um in this time it's it's a, it's ferociously productive and i think that's something that you grow to love and become addicted to but this year has really been a gift and i and um i as i say i don't think i probably wouldn't have given myself that um or, or provided myself with the type of time and energy and pause which has enabled me and the company to wonder uh how are we how are we about to step into this next period of our of our life and uh but both personally and as a company yeah no absolutely and and what 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 kind of things have you been doing this year that you might not have been doing in any other year you don't have to Tell us everything, obviously. I mean, it's, if there's anything you want to keep. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, I think, you know, I think first of all, the way that um, I've made work over the last 20 years has always been, um, and it, it, it's all been, it's always been a process of totally fixating in an uncompromising way on what is on the process and how it is going to unfold. And, and a gecko process has a lot of breath in it, a lot of time in it. Um, you know, it's a two, three, four year process, depending on how you picture that, such as its organic nature. Um, um, and so there's, it's always had an uncompromising layout to it. Nonetheless, there's always um, compromise in terms of space and the, the you know, just the, the, the scramble for space and time and people and money and all those things that you're trying to get right when you're trying to put a very complicated piece of work together. And I suppose this year has definitely allowed us to, to kind of come to terms with the vision of what's really required to make this work and how are we going to um, 
achieve the ultimate goal of creating the, the, the most perfect imaginable space and place, both, in, both physically and in terms of time, when that building emerges, it allows you to um, develop and build up your energy as well so that you can be honest in, 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 in that sense. You're not chasing your tail. You actually have the time to, to say, hold on a minute, we must get this right. We, we can't, um, this is going to be Gecko's home for the next 10, 20 years. We, we, we really have to get this right. And, and sometimes that honesty and that conviction takes, takes a sort of energy that you're not always afforded in the fast pace of, of the work that we do. So I think just sort of globally for us, that sort of time and energy has has really provided for that clarity of uh, assertion. Um, and I think it's also been a time of reflecting on some of the things that I would like to be doing over the next um, over the next few years, having had five years of experience of working with in and around film, how do how do we as gecko, how do we make even more sense of that? And, and when you're existing in a world where you where live performance is something that's completely whipped off of the table, there's I feel excited about that because um, I have been I have made a couple of films and it is something that I don't think I can ever do without now because of because of how much I love that. Um, it, it, this has given me more time to put some energy and imagine imaginative energy into what that could then be and how that might manifest next and and um how i might uh how i might explore what that particular and specific style of filmmaking with gecko is so i think those things are those things are true but i i guess also in reflecting on your question sean i think um it's been restorative this time as well. So when you say, what have you been doing? Um, I feel like I've been restoring some energy, some power that, um, you know, running a company is is all cylinders burning at uh, a ferocious, ferocious um, heat. So, so yeah, I, I you know, I've long wanted to give myself and gift myself the time to uh, practice meditation, and I, I, I've that's never I've never felt that I could get there. But this has also given me the time to to dive into that as well, which has been remarkable and remarkably creative as well. So those sorts of personal um, gains in terms of energy and power and resilience have I think. This has also been a time where I've been able to stock up on that, I think, as well. Yeah, that sounds great. I mean, it sounds great to 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 see that you've had that time to to do all that. And I guess I guess the meditation thing is kind of fascinating, right? Like, as in, is that the first time you've kind of meditated, as in in a, in a kind of formal way? Yeah, it's the first time that I have. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's. Uh, it's a four day training and it's, uh, it's, it's transcendental meditation, which is something that uh, David Lynch talks about a lot. He has his foundation and um, it's a four day training. And then you really embark on, uh, you know, a commitment to yourself that twice a day, it, you know, for 20 minutes at the beginning and the end of the day, you, you give yourself the time to, to meditate. So yeah, I've never, I, I had never given myself that time. So yeah, it is the first time I've done that. And do you think because you you did your R and D for the new show? Does the new show have a title, by the way, yet, or is it? It remains the eighth show. <laughs> it's a good title. I definitely come to see that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I because I, I I know the content of the show, which we'll, which we'll move on to. But I'm just um, I'm just wondering, like, whether or not you know already you can sense that your experience of meditation is having any effect on the way that you're working is 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 it having an effect oh, you think God. already oh it's yeah i mean it's massive it's it's massively um affecting I, I mean on a very simple level 
just giving yourself the time to check in on your settings at the beginning of the day um, to sort of, yeah, uh, um, to kind of create some equilibrium where you lower your, your anxiety and your stress. You give yourself a moment where you're not in the voracious monkey mind of doing from the minute you wake up you actually um, uh, you actually stop for a moment you check in in yourself and in that moment of beginning to meditate you pass through a very noisy room and that noisy room inside of you is um is what is egoically present in you what all of the things that you go oh I, okay i'm anxious about that am i and um and perhaps in the just before you 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 meditated, where you were just gathering your things and eating and trying to get ready for the day, you hadn't even perceived that you were anxious about some of those slightly more subterranean things. It's only when you begin to meditate that you get that you say that um, you acknowledge them and you and you sort of honour those uh, egoic problematic anxieties that you go, oh, okay, that I see. That's where that's what's happening down there um, in the engine room um, and then you in sort of honoring those uh, those present anxieties you sort of um, you sort of relinquish those and you dive and that and and, and therein the the name transcendental comes about that you that you at least give yourself the opportunity to dive and uh, to dip into the cool waters below that and um, yeah, it's what I've also found, as well as that the element that is so um, profoundly effective in terms of stress um, is also the creative dimension that meditation, uh, transcendental meditation, I should say, provides, which is, it, it, again, you sort of, there's a clearing that uh, in sort of clearing away some of those present anxieties and stresses you see things suddenly are there and um, I I'm always surprised when I'm in the mode of, cre of creation in, in creation time how profoundly clear things become and you come out of your meditation and you go wow I can't even begin to imagine that that would have emerged so crystal clear had I not been meditating so I think it's a uh, it has it's a multi-dimensional in terms of what that can provide what that has provided me i shouldn't i should talk just entirely entirely personally and again you know i'm a ve i'm a novice uh, meditator so but th at least until now that's what it has uh, it's gifted me for sure yeah that sounds that sounds great because obviously you know what most of us i mean have experienced is is extraordinary kind of confusion and a lot of spinning and uh, falling over and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's great to hear how that's helped. And I guess I guess I wonder, like with the show that you're making, um, which is about migration. I mean, you you obviously know more about the show than I do. Um, how would you? I mean, in your words, like how would you describe what the show is about? Well, I don't know the answer to that. Um, um, I'm 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 completely in the realm of searching for sure so I don't know what the show will be yet and therefore what it will be about but I think it might be worth saying this that um, a few years ago now it might be as many as four three or four years ago I had and this is and this is generally speaking how um, a gecko seed um, for, for, for something emerges which is I, I, I guess I try to understand or be aware of what it is I'm centrally focusing on or concerned about or what, where my feelings are taking me. And, um, and that's usually in the build up to that first year where I'm contemplating that initial seed. Um, and uh, I decided that I needed to go and uh, speak to my grandmother about her migration story and um i traveled to israel to speak to her and um i knew that that was that was something that had been cooking up in me for a few years i needed to talk about that and she had walked um from yemen from um northern yemen to southern yemen uh 
in order to escape persecution. And um, they made that trip on foot. And I, th I, I think it was about 350 kilometers and she was uh, four years old when she walked that distance um, to get on a, a ship in Aden to travel to Palestine. And um, so she made that uh, she made that journey when she was four years old with her with her with her siblings and her parents, and uh, yeah, they they made that migration. Um, that that so I, I guess three or four years ago, I started to wonder. Uh, that started to become uh, something that surfaced as something more and more important for me to understand what that was. In that that was. Um, a significant part of who I am. That migration story is inside of me and I wanted to understand it more. And I guess in traveling towards that conversation with her and having that, and having that discussion, I then started to change my focus to my grandfather and his parents who had uh, migrated from Poland um, as Jews to, um, to the UK and my grandfather, my, my father, who had migrated from Israel, and I guess myself, I was born in Israel. And um, so it became just this fascinating collection of migration stories, which were within reach, in that they were just um, up to grandparents. And then as I started to look great grandparents, it just becomes more beautifully uh, knotted and complex. And that became the, that was the initial feeling that this was an interesting personal story, but what's obvious and um, even more beautiful is that it's everybody's story because everybody has migrated, whether they, whether that's something that they have done personally or their parents, grandparents or their ancestors. Um, there's nobody that doesn't have a migration um uh, the story woven into the network of who they are in that migration is 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 pure and simple human by its by its nature we have we are all the subject or the um the product of migration stories and that to me is then becomes a sort of center of that exploration because it's something that is shrouded in negativity and um all sorts of uh peculiar vantage points and narratives in in the context of how we live and it being something so beautiful and wondrous and complex and human is exactly the sort of thing that sparks me into realizing that's what i'm going to be making a show about it's something that is that uh, is personal and societal and that's usually a good sign for me that it's something that it's something I want to take on to um, a voyage of discovery in terms of what it's going to become. Um, and, I, and I guess I have uh, discovered that racism has become, I guess it was there from the beginning, but that's become a very powerful avenue uh, that uh, that is central to that exploration. Um, I've definitely explored the Holocaust, but I, and, but I've also explored migration that has come about by um, climate disaster, disaster and climate breakdown. That's been that was a that was something that was there that's maybe faded away a little bit as I focused on other things. But home and family uh, is also very central to the exploration in the in in that it is entirely again human humanistically celebratory and and. Uh, my want is to allow that to be at the heart of this, a very positive um, story, ultimately. It sounds already like a super fascinating project, and I didn't realise how personal it was. I mean, obviously, we've spoken a bit about it in the past, so to hear that is, I don't know, I'm already really moved by it. Um, and, yeah, I love the fact that it reaches back in time and is equally present as well. And... You were talking a little bit um, the, the, the other night when we had a quick chat about who was in the room as well. So, because you you were, you were kind of, you sound very excited by the fact that you've got this wonderful ensemble together. Uh, may, maybe you should say a little bit about 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 the ensemble and how, how, that's, how the show is now coming together. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, I think that 
again, this year has um, has provided the sort of time and energy to really um, invest in that ensemble for this piece. I mean, in terms of making sure we can get the time where um, that group of people can be in a room and bit by bit, week by week as part of the process, I've been um, pooling together this group of human beings. Um, and I think where we've ended up for the, for, for the end of the process so far uh, makes me so deeply happy um, in so many ways because uh, um, when you're making a piece that is about the human story of migration um, and when you're embarked on a process like a, ge like, uh, a gecko process, which really is an endless um, sequence of questioning, questioning the room, questioning the performers, questioning the process, investigating um, personal story, my personal story, but but very much in investigating the personal stories of the human beings that are in the room, um, who's in the room becomes profoundly affecting. It always has been for a gecko process. And so to have had the, um, the performers in the room that have been there has been very, very uh, affecting on the piece. Um, it's the most ethnically diverse group of people that I've ever had in the room that Gecko's ever had, and um, it's it's yeah it's been it's been very important for me. I mean we have uh, we have Sadhu who's from from South India, we have Nathan who's who's from South Africa, uh, Vanessa who's from Mexico, uh, Miguel who's from Colombia. Kenny, who's British Chinese, uh, Ryan's from California, Katie's uh, from Bristol, um, and uh, who am I missing? One other performer that will come to me in a second. Oh God, that's awful. They're, they're missing... probably the best. They're probably the best performer in the room, it's right? Probably they're the probably... best one, isn't it? Um, wait a minute. <laughs> Uh, it's gone up my mind. Did I say Miguel Colombian? Yeah, I, I, it'll come to me in a second. But but um, but yeah. Anyway, it's been it's been such a a beautiful combination of of languages in the room. It's 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 incredible. But, oh, and Lucia, Lucia's from from Spain, and uh, so yeah, it's 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 yeah. Um, sorry, Lucia. Um, yeah, it's. Just in terms of languages, the languages in the room, it's uh, it's extraordinary. There are, the languages in the room are, are languages that we're not even attuned to because they're they're um, you know they're such remarkable they're such remarkably complex and diverse languages, Basque and Malayalam and um, uh, Nwatal. and the, I mean these are languages that you know that that we have no connect. They're not Latin based. They're not. They're just they're, they're very complex and beautiful languages. So to have those in the room as well has been uh, very wonderful. I mean, it's extraordinary that, you, you know, over the last 10 months that you've managed to get such a hugely broad uh, variety of people in the room. That sounds, that does sound su super exciting. And so tell me a bit more about, about the gecko process, because obviously you've made it clear at the beginning, you found the root, which is the story of your grandmother. And it sounds as if you kind of start to develop your own sense of what it is that you're chasing. And then it sounds like you then get a bunch of people in the room to kind of chase, chase down the show, chase down the narratives with you. Is that right? Does everyone then kind of genuinely collaborate? Is that how it works? Um, I mean, you know, something very important I should mention is that the another, another uh, sort of opportunity that arose because of, uh, lockdown and and, and uh, the the time we had, we were about to go into the studio in March. Um, so, okay. and when we actually went into the studio for the first time was September. So, um, that period of time, like that, there was a kind of six month period of time, which uh, meant that I could sketch out. Um, a, I think it was probably about eighty visual images and ideas. They weren't just visual; they were sonic. They were uh, they were choreographic. They were 
there was a broad range of ideas that I was uh, able to really um, work into with the design team, with um, other members of the creative team to make sure they were all that that creative team were um, felt very much that they had ownership of those ideas themselves and that they could interact and engage with me on those as we pass through that time of six months but also just so that we would practically have some of those objects in the room when we started we could send them off to the to the to some of the makers and actually have them worked up so that that um six month period of of collaboration uh you know if you like offline as it were was was uh, intrinsic and will probably play a part in every future gecko process so another huge benefit of, of, um, yeah, of this time amazing. yeah yeah. It also it also sounds it also sounds more akin to preparing for a for a film, right? The way that you yeah, describe I, images and sounds and um, yeah. So I, I, I'm I'm fascinated by what the script might look like, but I'm imagining it looks more like a film script than a traditional theatre play. Well, no, I mean there's no there's no script. There there is just. Um, uh, uh, there is just there is just a list of eighty ideas by that point, which is um, these are eighty ideas, and how we're going to bring those about in the room, um, and you know when when it actually comes to getting into the room for the first time, I attack probably the ideas that I'm least clear on, uh, the ideas that I know. Uh, the least about or that are problematic or that are potentially um, on the fringes of the heart of the idea to see whether or not they're going to yank the central idea into a different direction, which is what I'm um, open to in the, you know, in the early stages of making something. I have some perceptions of what some of the metaphors might be initially. I don't have any story. I certainly don't have a script. Um, I just have some feelings. And what I'm trying to do very much is not um, settle at all on anything, anything at all too, too strong um, for fear of starting to impose something very powerful on, on what it could be, which would then infect the whole, the whole process and say, no, this is what it is this is where we're going. When in actual fact, this period of development has nothing to do with um, trying to settle on what, it's not like every day I go into the studio and think, I must work out what the first three beats of this story are. I must work out what the characters are. I must work out um, who this is about or what the, even what the central narrative is. I'm not, that's not where, the initial process of a gecko process is at all. It is far more about, um, I'm going to pull this texture into the room and I'm just going to, um, in detail, explore that texture um, because I want to see whether or not that is going to be a color or a texture that is going to be present um, in the world of this piece. So initially, because I don't have a clue what the piece is theatrically going to be, um, I have nothing to say about character or storyline. I have nothing to say. I ha and I kind of don't want to talk about that. I just want to see what the world is, what the texture is. Um, so if we are exploring being inside a boat for three days, um, I don't really know where that exists, that, that boat, the boatness of that, because um, because it's not like I'm then going to write a, um, a script about seven families who are in a boat who reflect on where they've been and where they're going. That boat might just be um, some choreography that helps to texture what it feels like to be unmoored. It might just purely be a poetic texture that impacts on something that is more fundamental to what the piece is going to be. So I don't know if you can see what I mean, but if effectively um, locking something down is, is, um, is problematic because it means I try then to fulfill that narrative early on. I try and go, oh, this is a narrative about some families on a boat, where if I did that, 
actually I would make a very boring uh, thing quite quickly. And I'd then just for the next two years be trying to fulfill a story about some families on a boat which is not how gecko shows work you know it's so it's a really different um thing it, it requires a huge amount of patience and courage just to let the thing cook up over time yeah no it sounds super interesting i mean it sounds to me as if you're trusting something much more intuitive perhaps uh than than than, than some people might or is that right, or you're are you trusting a, a feeling, something that's not quite as tangible as as character and narrative? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, ultimately, I'm um, my main interest in the end is not really oh, the ultimate aim with the Gecko Show is not that an audience will sit and watch it and feel my grandmother's journey in Yemen uh, when she walked with her family and to come out of it and empathize with my story. That's not really what I'm after. Um, somebody might perceive that if they are, um, if their emotional and intellectual settings are such, are in such, a, are conditioned in such a way when they watch a Gekka show. That's possible and that's okay. But that's not really the, the, the summit of, of uh, the experience that I dream of when I'm making a show. My, the summit of the experience really is that you come out of the Gecko show and you are awash or flooded with your own migration story or your sense of what that is or your feelings um, about your deeply held feelings about racism or about um, uh, your, your, you know, your your parents or your relationship to your parents or grandparents or, or otherness or whatever it is. So, in order to get to to reach that summit, I have to treat st story and narrative in a very um, in a very careful way. I have to bit by bit build up. Um, textures and um, uh, and worlds within a piece that will provide for the signposting of that experience, um, which will uh, enable and, uh, and allow an audience to embark on that inner journey. And so that I guess it, it can't. I can't be heavy-handed with a narrative when I get in the room, however excited or interested I might be. And, you know, yeah. I've written several narratives during the process of making the piece, and I usually write them out, and I'm immediately bored by them, and I put them to one side and sort of go, oh, I'm glad I got that out of my system. I'll just, I'll put that to one side. It's definitely not what this piece will be. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's quite, it, it, it takes the time that it takes because it's, it's a complex thing to try and piece together. No, it sounds like it. I guess I was thinking because of this year and what's happened and thinking about Black Lives Matter and um, and what happened in the summer. And I guess, I guess I'm wondering like how those things that happen outside the room in society kind of come back at you, you know, whether or not, you know, whether or not the, the, the murder of George Floyd, you know, has that found a space in the room? Um, Cause you were saying how the piece suddenly also talks about racism as well as migration, as well as home and family. Mm. It, it, it can't not come into the room. Um, you know, it's um, the, the, the room is, it reflects back into itself um, and ricochets out and comes back in, in that you, you, you know, I try to create a safe, um, non-judgmental environment in which people feel bravely themselves, in which they allow um, their entire being to be present, because that is that's really ultimately my fascination with a with a process and with a piece. When you know the the opportunity that you might meet someone, another human being, and that to be. Uh, a deeply felt connection is is the is really um ultimately the aim and and the process very much uh is about that as well so what i'm trying to say is 
I walk into a space and I try to uh, set up the room and create an environment in which we don't really know where, where the day is going to end up. Um, there are provocations and questions and tasks that provide for that, for a multitude of uh, potentials within certain um, parameters, of course. And trust is, a, is, a, is, of course, a very fundamental ingredient for that kind of, um, uh, that, that kind of voyage. When you're talking about racism and uh, migration and personal lived experience, it's inevitable that um, it's inevitable that people will bring those to bear. Whether those are linguistically expressed in a way that you hear those stories, which of which they were, then that's one thing. Or whether or not something um, unfolds um, in terms of movement and emotional expression in the room. And you inherently understand where that might be coming from. Both of those things are present. Both of those things are real. And um, I think that the, the performers in the room brought that and will and will have been inevitably infected and affected by the uh, world events in terms of the civil unrest in America and their own personal ex um, experiences those things came into the room every day. So I guess it's inevitable that those things became more and more present in, in what emerged out of the room, for sure. Yeah. The, the, the other thing that we chat about the, the other day that I, that I thought was fascinating was the fact that along, along with your um, meditation practice that's kind of began, began over the last few months, um, you decided to switch, switch off social media yeah, and so I was fascinated by that because I, I kind of I kind of thought oh that's kind of an interesting way of dealing with the present moment right De dealing with where we're at mm. Um, mm. and I guess I guess I guess the two things together make sense like, like you choose to meditate and choose to switch off social media um, and doing that over this time when everything is going so chaotically kind of kind of crazy that you're that you're kind of you're kind of deciding to do this is it is is that having an effect on on the way that you're thinking about the world the way that you're seeing things do you know what I mean are you do you feel like you're changing your perspective over the last over the last year has that been happening as well um I think you know yeah you see again this is what this sort of um this is what this time has provided. It, it creates an opportunity and um, that opportunity, which I think in its most positive sense is reflective um, and provides the opportunity for growth. It has for, it has for me and uh, in a, um, so I can't speak for everyone because obviously this has been a very difficult time for lots of people for lots of different complex reasons. Um, I think you know, on reflection, when I embarked on, on this period, I guess the question has been there for a long time. How, what is this providing me, this social media? You know, looking at these, looking at these comments, um, hearing, the, hearing the sort of the chatter of, um, of, uh, of the world around you. What is it providing me? What, what you know, and I, and I guess, I have felt for a while that it's not particularly um, helpful for me in terms of mental health, in terms of in terms of my my experience and understanding of the world around me. I guess that's the thing that you could that I could at times have allowed myself to perceive. Oh, this is very good because I'm I understand more about what's going on when I read Twitter. Um, but I think. I actually found it to be a toxic experience in the end, something that has a kind of, uh, at times very upsetting, uh, at times um, purely a waste of time, you know, that like you think, oh, that's, a, that's an hour that I've been just kind of browsing various social media platforms. Um, and 
and I guess as well as meditation, I, I think I embarked on sort of a voracious book reading um, period of time as well. Just and in, in in that quest for understanding the world in a different way, in a, in a deeper way, picking up books um, and uh, and reading about an artistic or intellectual understanding of various aspects of life as a human being, to me, has been a far more um, a, a deeper and more profound uh, use of my time and energy. So yeah, I think it's 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 those things coming to, together. Perhaps I knew it long before I did it that it wasn't that actually it wasn't it wasn't really giving me anything really the experience of Twitter and Facebook and so forth. So yeah, I mean I don't miss it at all, um, <laughs> and uh, I don't think my understanding about what's going on in the world really is impacted on that. I know what's going on in the world and um, I think it kind of gives you a bit more um, a bit more positive time and energy to try to um, to understand what's going on through your ex the experiences that you give yourself. So for example, if I'm, if I'm in a room with people that are from um, all continents of the world and we're discussing racism and uh, um, migration, my experience of that is fully focused on, on what's coming out of the room. I'm picking up on everything that's 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 happening there. And in that, and in so doing, I experience, um, you know, years and years and years of of, uh, of both lived experience, but ancient history as well through their stories. You know, so I think I'm trying to, you know, as you get a bit older, Sean, you you know, you you try to, you wonder. I wonder where my energy is best placed right now. How can I be a better servant both to myself, my family? and um my craft you know and i think you you try to make better to better decisions along that that uh you know along that thinking yeah no it's 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 great to hear that you're that what, what it is that you're trust what it is that you're trusting because obviously you know if we trust what's happening on social media then obviously we're going to get incredibly incredibly lost and confused and yeah mm. we'll spiral somewhere very unreal. I think that's absolutely right. Um, in terms, in terms of the actual show that you're making and and the, and the film making that you were talking about earlier as well, like, do you already know going into this process that the show might have a life on the screen as well as on stage? Um, no, I don't. I don't know for sure, but um, it's it's strange. It's like uh, a part of me has opened up in terms of filmmaking, a part of me has opened up, um, if you like, into which everything that I'm doing, there is a new filter in me in, w in which everything sort of passes through that. And I guess I'm sort of seeing uh, everything that's, that's cooked up and is made in the studio a little bit through the potential of that as well, through the storytelling. I mean, actually, luckily, Gecko is such a... Um, it's such a filmic language in that it is pictorial and 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 uh, sort of shot by shot. The load up of metaphor and um, uh, and and the the physical journey of the piece tends to have that kind of feel about it. And the way that we work with lighting also kind of. Um, it's kind of like a close up, you know, this is a very, this is a very small light that, that asks you and requires you to focus your, the lenses of your eyes into this very particular moment in time. And then there is a kind of wide shot of the whole stage and, you know, the opening out of the lights, um, again, is an invitation to you to kind of perceive what's going on in a, in a bigger, um, more, uh, in, in, in a bigger sense. So, the two don't, are not such such wild, wildly different um, experiences in, in a way, even though if we really get into it, they are different experiences. But at least I can hold both of those things in, in, in some way. I think we may have ended up uh, with a, 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 um, a landscape and world of stuff that's the show, and we may have ended up 
with a whole load of things that, that are different that could become more filmic. That's definitely possible that those two things have happened. <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds great that now with this new space, potentially you, you, you can be making work kind of uh, simultaneously, right? It sounds like you have the, the potential and the capacity to be making stage work and studio-based film work as well. Is that, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. The, 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 the creation space um, all along, the, the kind of, the bottom line is we need to be able to make the, the, the stuff that we make. And because we make fairly big um, mid-scale shows that tour around the world, we also make films, we make education stuff, um, and how can we make sure that the space provides for that? And I think, we, you know, we have a, a very, we, we will have a very big creation space with a, a lighting rig, uh, sound provision, but then there'll be a workshop as well for wood, metal, soldering. Um, and that's really important because it's it, making a gecko show is is such a technical experience. Everything is going through a process of devolution. So I, I'll make something with the performers, which could be very choreographic, that uh, the next day it will evolve and I'll change it and I'll start to focus in on the things that are working and strip away the things that aren't working. Running alongside that is, is the same process with everything else that, that, that is evolving in the show. So there will be a technical element whether that's some kind of puppet or whether that's some kind of um, staging a table, whether that's, um, you know, lights on a stick, whatever it is, those things are also going through the same sort of slow evolution. And those things need to keep going back to the, to the workshop to be adjusted, to be changed and um, to be stripped down and rebuilt. And so it, the workshop part is very important, but then, you know, having uh, the, the, the whole space be modular so that the workshop can then be packed away and become another studio. The big space can be split into two so that you can work maybe technically in one half with the lighting, but choreographically in the other half. Um, there are other spaces in the building as well that could be used. We, we, we hope to have a recording studio, a sound recording room. What will be a meeting room can also become a small studio for more um, you know, smaller, smaller number of pieces of development as well. So we're trying to make a building which is very modular that provides a whole range of different things for different times in the in the process, both for us and for you know uh, companies in our community near and far. And uh, yeah, so we we're trying to make it. We're trying to think through all of those different iterations. The space sounds incredible and and so does the show um and amit really i think what you've been doing over the last year uh with your meditation and, and gathering this incredible ensemble together and um it's it's brilliant and it's it's super positive to hear and it it, it fills me with with like wonder but also it's genuinely inspiring you know it's good to know that you're that you're you're kind of going through a process of really grounding yourself in a time when when that when that's you know a really big challenge so uh so kind of like thank you i kind of i kind of got to i got to that point where i really feel like i wanted to say thank you um thank you mate is that, yeah no it's 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 great um be, before we kind of end this conversation is there anything anything that we that we you feel like we might have left out or anything you want to go back over or 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 emphasize in any way uh, no, I, I that feels very sort of very complete, and uh, I think everything that I might have wanted to say, I think we we said. So, thank you very much, Sean. Thanks for your generosity and uh, for asking such brilliant questions. Uh, thank you very much. Great, and um, please say happy birthday to Arthur from all of us. <laughs> we'll do. Arthur Arthur will be Arthur will be delighted. Huh? Okay, speak to you soon. I hope. Thanks, Sean. Thank you very much. Okay, much love.